Hi guys, Micro here. In this video, I'm going to go over all of my favourite Runelite plugins that I couldn't live without over the last few months of playing this game. I have discovered so many awesome things that improve your quality of life that I want to share. I will be including timestamps in the description of this video, so if you want to go to a specific part of the video, you can just scroll along the bottom and look for specific things that, you know, are good for you, because you might already have some of these plugins. So without further ado, let's get right into it. One of the plugins I want to talk about is just actually a default built in to Runelight, and that is the prayer reordering and disabling. If you right click your prayer icon and you can go enable prayer reordering, what this allows you to do is drag your prayers wherever you want them to go and then put them in your book in a place where it's easier to click for you and put them closer together, etc. And you can even right click a prayer and go hide and then that will get rid of it as well. So when you actually, you know, go ahead and disable prayer reordering, it then disappears. This way you can only see the prayers that you actually care about. And I can hide all of these ones that I never use, the low level prayers, etc. And it helps dramatically. Another plugin that is awesome that I've used since day one really is the time tracking reminder. You can go into the settings of the time tracking reminder plugin and you can turn anything you want on. I typically just have my stuff like farming contracts because I love farming, stuff like Hespori and my fruit tree and hardwood tree patches, but you can even toggle on things like your herb patches and your birdhouse runs and it comes up here on your buff bar. That way, no matter what you're doing, you can see when things are ready. Your seaweed as well, whatever you want, it's fully customizable. I don't like doing too many hourlies like as soon as they come up. So I personally just, whenever my farming contract's up, I do it and then also do a farm run with it. And it works perfectly for me. Another plugin that I really couldn't suggest enough if you play with game sounds is Annoyance Mute. You can configure this plugin and turn a bunch of really annoying sounds off. A lot of people will hate certain sounds and some sounds can be a little bit ear piercing. So I've turned a bunch of them off that then I don't have to worry about during a Slayer task or a boss or whatever. Again, fully customizable, have it however you want it. One thing that has really helped me when learning PVM is the Tile Packs plugin. When you install this Tile Pack plugin, it comes up on the right hand side bar right here. You can then click it and then you can add whatever tiles you want depending on what bosses you're doing. So for example, something that I really like is the Cox Crabs one because that room is very annoying, but if you add these tile markers, it helps dramatically. It really, really helps where to put the crabs and all of that jazz. This can also apply to pretty much any boss you do, so just this tile packs plugin on its own can then be used everywhere. I've come from RS3, so I love presets in the bank. One way to do a semi preset in Old School RuneScape is bank tag layouts. If you install this plugin, whenever you go to your bank and you're just doing any type of boss or anything you're doing, so this is like my Muspa preset for example, there is this button at the bottom right and you can preview your auto loadout. What this does is it takes what's ever in your inventory and worn inventory and then puts it into a actual preset. This way it's put all of the stuff I'm wearing currently, which is my graceful in here, and then anything in my inventory would go over on this right hand side. So for example, if I just took out some food and some potions, then I went to do it again. You can preview the auto load out before you save it. There we go. That's my inventory over here and then my actual things that I'm using over here. You can obviously just move stuff accordingly as well. So if it's not perfect when you set it up, you can then you know change it and customize it however you want. When you're happy with all of your changes, you just press the use this layout button and it will then save that as a layout. And then you can customize it however you want, like I have with my Musper. And this makes it so much easier to gear up because I can just take all of my gear out, then take all of my inventory out and you're ready to PVM. Moving on to another bank plugin while we're on the subject, a banked experience is really, really awesome to use. You want to do this one that I'm showcasing right here. This is the best one for banked experience as it comes up on the right hand side on your little toolbar again. If you click on this, it can then choose any skill that you have some banked experience in. So for example, I can go to crafting and you can see that I have 95 crafting banked because I have set my seaweed to be the super glass make pickup, which is what I do. And then that gives me 42,000 molten glass, which I make light orbs with. And then it says that I have 3 million experience in molten glass if I was to turn all my seaweed. 
this way it's very easy to track whether you have the stuff in your bank to go for the level that you want to go for especially for iron men this really good plugin this is one that pretty much everyone knows about but it's a good one to comment on because there's a little bit extra that some people don't always know the quest helper plugin this plugin helps with questing and you just literally click blue and you get the quest done. In addition to this plugin though, if you were to go ahead and go on the quest helper and select anything you want to do, so say I wanted to do the Karumja Elite Diary, I can then press this button at the top right of my bank, which is the quest helper tab, and it will give me all of the items I need for this diary. It says I need this to make a anti-venom potion it says that i need to craft some nature runes so you can just take these things out of the bank and not have to search your bank for them essentially which is really really nice you can do this on quests as well as the area tasks as you can see on my list i do have plugins that are like guardians of the rift tombs of a mascot zora so whenever you're doing a boss literally just search the boss's name in the toolbar and I'm guaranteeing that there is a plugin for that boss. So if you want any help on a specific boss, if you're struggling or if you just want to learn it easier, definitely search the boss in the toolbar as well and then you can get any boss plugins essentially. Something that I really like is skills progress and action progress. If you go to skills progress, if you go to your skills tab, you can see these little bars underneath your skills and it shows how far away you are for your next level. So as you can see, I'm super close to my first 99, which is farming. A little bit of spoilers there for the Group Iron Man series. It is about, you know, three, four weeks behind. But we are progressing pretty nicely, and it's cool to see that bar go up. The other one is the action progress. So whenever you're doing any type of actions, you'll get a bar while doing them. So for example, if I was to glass blow right now, I get this bar right here. You can also hold down Alt and move it wherever you want on your screen, so you can customize it fully. You can also make it bigger if you want it to change. I personally like it in this type of box, but yeah, you can change it however you want. This is especially good when you're doing multi-skilling, because when you're like fletching or something, you don't really know how much longer you have on fletching, and you can do some multi-skilling at the same time, knowing exactly when to fletch again. One that isn't super helpful, but it does help with your dopamine rushes whenever you get loot or whatnot, and that is the C Engineer Complete plugin. C Engineer is an awesome creator himself, and he's made this plugin, which is absolutely amazing. I always use it. If you go into the configuration, you can change it so it can announce a bunch of different things. I personally only like the collection log entry, but you can have it for leveling up, quest completions, everything like that as well. I also have Easter eggs and streamer troll sounds on. Easter eggs are actually really, really fun, and I definitely would recommend having them on because there is some funny ones when you're just exploring the game. Next up, we have customizable XP drops, which I could not stress enough. This one is absolutely amazing. What this one does is when you hit something, it shows you the exact amount that you've hit on that monster instead of just an XP drop. This way you can actually see exactly what you're hitting instead of seeing 40 XP in strength and being like, oh, that must be a 10. Instead of working it out yourself, this does it for you. One thing that I will include though is I like to see the color change when I'm correctly flicking my offensive prayers. So how it normally works is it's white and then it turns blue when you're using like piety or something and hitting. It shows that it's been buffed. If you want that to show, my default XP drop color is white. But if I change the XP drop color for melee, mage, and range to blue, it then has that override color whenever I'm, you know, praying correctly. Some cool settings on this is grouping the XP drops into one hit. So if you're using shared, instead of it coming up with like four different XP drops, it will just do one. And that is really, really nice. Another thing I like to do in the miscellaneous settings is hiding vanilla XP drops and vanilla XP tracker. That way it's a little bit nicer with this plugin instead. But feel free to pause the video here if you want to copy my settings, if you like the way mine look. Or play around with it yourself and choose however you want it. Another thing that I quite like is improved tile indicators. If you turn this on, what this does is it makes your character always prioritize over the tile that you're standing on instead of the tile like overlapping your player, which is really nice. And speaking about tile indicators in general, in your default plugins, you can go tile indicator and then apply it however you want. I personally have my destination tile highlighted as well so I can see where I'm going and my true tile obviously on the ground while I'm moving. 
You can change this however you want and whatever colors you want, but this is a very good thing to have, especially when doing a bunch of movement-based bosses or Sepulchre, which is agility training. It is very useful to have to see exactly where your character is in real time. One thing that I do when I play the game is I actually play on stretched mode, which is just a default Runelite plugin right here. I just turn stretch mode on and then if you go into your GPU settings, you can then edit the GPU settings to make sure that your chat and things like that is not blurry. The way to make sure that things are blurry mostly is this one right here, the UI scaling. Honestly, I can't stress enough how good a cat null ROM is. This one is the best one for a clear chat. If you have it as just like the default one, look how blurry my chat is. As soon as I turn on cat null, boom, I can see chat perfectly. Another thing within this GPU setting is your draw distance increase, which is absolutely amazing. You can also put on stuff like uh, anti-alias in, which is just making the whole map look a little bit more crisp and a bunch of other good options so the gpu plugin is very good again just a default rune light plugin another default plugin is ground items ground items can be customized in so many different ways and it is absolutely fantastic i personally love things like loot beams within rs3 so i turn loot beams on in my ground items plugin and you can change the color and the value of all the different loot beams that you have Customizing these makes it feel so good that whenever you see like a gold beam, you know it's worth a lot of money. Another option that I think is really, really useful within here is Collapse Ground Item Menu. What this does is instead of having 20 items on top of each other, it will say the item times 20. This saves so much screen clutter, it's amazing. As you can see, this is worth 20k and anything over 20k has a blue loot beam for me. So you can see that loot beam. Another thing is if you just hold down the alt key, you can then right click to show things if they're hidden or right click to hide them. And then also if you want to give something a custom loot beam that doesn't necessarily have a value, you can just left click it and it will turn into a purple loot beam. Alt makes this customization just while you're getting drops so much smoother. There is two last inbuilt plugins that I want to speak about before the end of this video, one of them being item identification. This one, if you go into the settings, you can actually toggle on a bunch of different items for them to be labeled for you. Honestly, most of them don't really matter because you can easily tell the difference between bars and ores and herbs and stuff like that. But the saplings and the herb seeds that I have ticked literally are identical. So if you take a look at my inventory now, with the item identification, I can see that that's a palm tree, that's a dragon fruit, mahogany, and every single sapling is labeled even though they look the same. And then with the herb seeds as well, you can see which ones are which, with the R being Ranar, L being Lantodime, etc. This is huge for identifying different seeds and stuff when you're planting them on farm runs and whatnot, and also whenever you open up a farming contract, it's quite nice as well. The other one is the menu entry swapper. This one is also really, really useful. What the menu entry swapper does is it allows you to hold down shift and right click any item in your inventory. Then you can swap the shift click or the normal left click of the item. So if I want to just instantly drop things, I can do left click drop. You can also do it for shift modifiers for different things if you want multiple uses of an item. You can even do it when buying from stores and when taking from your bank. So when I was doing construction contracts, for example, I would set my take still bar as one and then I would take all for the mahogany planks. So the mahogany planks would take all of them, but the bar, I only need a couple of during a mahogany home run. So I would just click that a couple of times, then grab the rest of the planks and you're good to go, right? That was much nicer doing it that way. Another thing that people like to do is set the drink option to stuff like stamina potions as a left click in your inventory so you don't have to close the bank to drink them. What I mean by this is, again, it has deposit all, right? But if you shift right click, you can change your left click to drink. Then once it's drink, you drink it straight from the bank and then get back to setting up your preset or taking something else out instead and then you've pre-stamina potted. This is really good, especially for like Blast Furnace and stuff like that. Menu Entry Swapper, big. 
And that is it for my favorite plugins on Runelite so far. Obviously, there are more, but I wanted to condense this video into just my favorites and the biggest ones for me personally. If there's any that has been useful to you, let me know in the comments what you like the most. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, give the video a like as it supports me heavily. If you made it this far into the video, you're an absolute legend. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, until next time, see ya.